Hi guys, it's Crystal from Keto Carnivores Chris, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made these yummy, keto, carnivore-friendly, protein-sparing bagels. I started by separating um, six eggs to get the egg whites, and I kept three of the yolks for this recipe, and then I used the other three in some buns I was making. So for this recipe, I'm using six egg whites, and three egg yolks. Once my egg whites were ready to go, I added them to my mixing bowl and I started to use my new fancy stand mixer. This was only my second time using it, so it was still pretty new to me. I then added a teaspoon of cream of tartar and um, I then went on to measure out 60 grams of um, egg protein powder. I used the no yolking brand. And then I did two teaspoons of nutritional yeast, two teaspoons of collagen powder, and I did a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, and an eighth of a teaspoon of xanthan gum, a dash of salt, and a tablespoon of powdered swerve. I mixed it all up um, and then started to add it slowly to my stand mixer. So I added the nutritional yeast and the onion powder for flavor. I added the xanthan gum for texture. It really doesn't add a lot of carbs to this recipe. I think it works out to be two carbs for the whole recipe, the amount I used. Um, if you're doing strict carnivore, you could just omit the nutritional yeast and the xanthan gum and these would work just as well. Um, I like the flavor of nutritional yeast, so I added it and again the xanthan gum to give it a little bit more texture but it is not necessary once i had all the mixture added to my bowl and um it had time to whisk through i had stopped my mixer and you can see i've got super firm stiff peaks and i'm just figuring out how to detach my whisk attachment again this was new to me so um once I got it all um, figured out, I folded in my three egg yolks that I had reserved from earlier. And I just kind of folded them in slowly. And then you can see my spatula fall apart there. This is real footage. I just put it back on and kept folding those egg yolks in. Um, I didn't want to over mix it, but I just wanted to make sure they were all worked through and combined. They actually mixed in quite nicely and it didn't um, seem to flatten my mixture at all, which was nice. Um, I was worried about it falling and getting too thin on me, but it held up really well. Once the egg yolks were all combined to my egg whites, I grabbed a large Ziploc bag um, and added my mixture to that. I didn't want to mess around with a piping bag because the ones I have suck and they don't hold a lot. So I figured a large Ziploc bag would work better. I had a bagel donut pan that I used for six of my bagels. And then I also used my baking sheet. I wanted to see which way I liked better. And I also wanted to tape both methods for you so that you could see um, that it's not necessary to have a bagel pan. If you don't have a bagel pan, you don't even need the baking mat. You could use parchment paper. So I piped out my bagels into the pan first and it actually um, piped out quite nicely and held its shape really well. I was quite pleasantly surprised and then after my baking pan was done I went on to the baking sheet and again I 
really love this baking mat because it has those circles on it. I um, specifically bought this mat for this purpose and I've always wanted one and it worked out awesome. Once the mixture was all piped out, I topped it with some everything but the bagel sneet seasoning. And after the everything but the bagel seasoning was on, I transferred the pans to my oven. I wasn't sure on what temperature I was going to do. Um, I didn't want them to get too dark or overdone. Bagels are generally lighter in color, um, but I didn't want my mixture to fall flat. I set my oven for 280 degrees Fahrenheit, which I probably should have set at the beginning of the video. Um, and then I did set it for 30 minutes. Um, I just kept my eye on it. As it was starting to get a little bit too brown, I brought my temperature down to 270 and then eventually 260 for the last five minutes. And after the 30 minutes was done, I let it sit in the oven, shut off for 30 minutes. And here I'm pulling them out. I have some hamburger buns under those that um, actually didn't get to cook as long, but I had to pull them out too. Um, so yeah, they were in the oven for a half an hour at 280. Uh, I did watch and bring the temperature down. I do have a convection oven, so my oven is a bit hotter. Once they were completely cooled, I transferred them to a container um, to let them set before cutting them. I had dinner to get prepped and stuff, so I just wanted them out of the way. They came out of the pan super easy. I did spray it with some avocado oil. I don't remember if I said that or not, um, but they came out super easy. I was quite impressed. I wrapped it up and put the bagels off to the side and made dinner. Later in the evening, I decided to cut into one of the bagels. I didn't cut them all up. I um, only cut the one up that I taste tested. I wanted to see how they were and it cut really well. It felt really dense like your traditional bagel would feel. Um, and you can see there, it's like a nice color and texture. I added some whipped cream cheese. Um, I tried to be all graceful and you know, I spilled so. <laughs> After the cream cheese was on, I decided to add a little bit more everything but the bagel seasoning because you can never have enough of everything but the bagel seasoning. And there you have it. I was so impressed and pleased with the way these turned out. They tasted good even the day of, although they are better the next day after they sat in the fridge. Okay guys, I'm gonna try it. I wanna try the top part because of Hmm. That is so good, guys. So good. Let me know if you try it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And let me know if you guys try the recipe. Thanks for watching. Bye.